Wow, the Lord is alive here in Texas. Greetings from the promised land, the holy land, New Jersey. I'm always flying out of Newark all the time, and now they tell me I'm in Newark. But it's very different than the Newark I know, you know. There, you know, here you have the cows, there we have McDonald's. That's about, you know. But it's great to be here. Um, uh, what a tremendous thing you have here. Uh, blessed uh, with the pastors, with uh, the, the Copelands, and all, all that God is doing. It's an honor to be here. Um, a few things before we get rolling. Uh, often, I haven't, didn't do this before, but people had asked, and so, you want to see my family? Yeah. Should have an image up there of, the, uh, of my two boys. <laughs> that's Eliel, he's five years old, and that's, that's Diel, is three years old. And uh, recently I was home and my five-year-old said, you know, Dad, we want to do a surprise for you. We wanna, I wanted to, to kind of make the house look like a hotel so you could feel at home. I was anointing my wife who was sick and for healing, and my son Eliel said, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, I said, remember how the prophet Samuel anointed David? And he said, oh, yeah. And then he thought, and then he, then he, he asked, he said, Dad, he said, is she going to become king? I said, no, not on my watch. <laughs> I was recently asked to speak at Capitol Hill to leaders and members of Congress. It was the day after the Supreme Court heard the case that would decide marriage. And it was a prophetic moment, and we are going to have a clip of that at the end. I want to show you to encourage you. And something else at the end, I want to give you the ironic blessing that God himself gave to bless you. And no, no matter how much I share tonight, I can only touch on the mysteries. I don't have, I didn't bring DVDs or books or anything, but they have some, a limited uh, supply from the ministry. So there you can get it there, or you can order it, or they have it everywhere. But I'll just quickly tell you what there are. One is the mystery of the Shemitah, which they should have there after the service. Uh, the second is the Harbinger, which is what began this, the first revelation. The third is the Harbinger Decoded, which is like a prophetic explosion where you actually see the Harbingers unfold. And the last one, um, that's on DVD, and the last one is the Mystery of the Shemitah Unlocked, which is just, they did a, I'm in it, I didn't make it, but it's a very powerful, powerful way of seeing it. So that should either be there or you can get it. But now, as we begin, do, is there a Bible here? I'm sure you have tons of Bibles. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll take anybody's Bible. Thank you. All right. I'm going to open up from 2 Kings. 2 Kings and, ver and chapter 17. Second Kings 17. And it says this, of the final days, the last days of Israel, verse 7, it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the pagans whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly things that were not right against the Lord their God. They built high places in their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. They set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burned incense in all the high places and did, as did the pagans whom the Lord carried away and did wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. They served idols of the, which the Lord said, you shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel, against Judah, by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn from your evil ways, keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I command your fathers, which I have sent you by my servants, the prophets, notwithstanding they would not hear. And they hardened their necks like the necks of their fathers and didn't believe in the Lord their God. And it goes on to say, as they lifted up their children as sacrifices, and therefore the Lord removed them from the land. We are living in the end times. We are in critical times. 
And you need to be aware, we need to be aware of what's happening. I have much to share with you. I can only touch on some of the things here. For those of you who don't know the Harbinger, in a nutshell, is it possible that there exists an ancient mystery that lies behind everything from 9-11 to the collapse of Wall Street that warns of coming calamity? In the last days of ancient Israel, as we read right here, nine harbingers, nine prophetic signs appear in the land, warning of judgment. The amazing thing or the stunning thing is the same nine harbingers have now reappeared on American soil. Some in New York City, some in Washington, D.C. Some have involved objects, some have involved leaders, pronounce, actually pronouncing judgment without realizing what they're doing, even the President of the United States. And since the harbinger came out, they have not stopped. They've continued to manifest. We only have time to touch on that as I share other things, but I'll give an example. The fourth harbinger in the book. When God first warned Israel of the coming judgment, he allowed the nation to be shaken. He allowed the hedge of protection to be lifted up temporarily because God is a God of mercy who warns before judgment. And so he allowed an enemy to make an attack on the land to shake them, to bring them back to him. But Israel did not come back. They responded with defiance. They said, we're going to come back stronger against God. We're going to rebuild what was fallen, stronger, higher, greater. The prophet Isaiah records it in Isaiah 9:10. That's the beginning of the harbingers. Not long ago in the scheme of history, America's hedge of protection was removed. An enemy was allowed to make a strike on the land. It was a shaking, and for a time it looked like there was going to be revival. People flocked to churches after 9-11, and they said, God bless America. But there was no real revival, because when, in order to have revival, you have to have repentance. Without repentance, there's no revival. So what's happened is America, instead of growing closer, has grown farther from God. And they made that vow. In the ancient version of the Bible called the Septuagint, the rabbis translated the vow of Isaac, that they made after the attack the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with quarried stone higher and taller. And they translated it like this. They said, the bricks have fallen. Come, let us build for ourselves a tower. Well, they took the words from Babel. A tower of defiance would rise from the ruins. What happened at Ground Zero? America, the leaders vowed we're coming back stronger and stronger, but without God. And what happened is they started building a tower. A tower that they said was a tower of defiance. Now there turned out there was a scripture hidden in ground zero. A photographer took a picture of it in the ruins. He was whisked out of it and he looked at his camera. When he saw the scripture, he began to break down and weep. What was the scripture? The scripture was, come let us build for ourselves a tower. They took it from Babel. And it's on that ground that a tower began rising and rising and rising. In the last days of ancient Israel, the leaders pronounced this ancient vow. And that vow brought judgment, brought destruction. And in Hebrew, that vow is only eight words, eight Hebrew words. After the harbinger came out, the president, Obama, came down to ground zero. And they showed him the tower. They showed him the beam that would be the final beam crowning the tower. And they asked him to inscribe words, so he inscribed words on the tower. He could put anything he wanted on there. What did he put on there? In modern American prose, he put down on the beam of the tower the vow of defiance that brought judgment. And he did it in English, eight English words that matched the eight Hebrew words of ancient Israel that brought destruction. So America had its own Tower of Babel rising, and only in this year has it reached its completion. Now the harbingers that have continued do not take place in a vacuum. The pattern of the harbinger is the nation being warned of God. If it doesn't come back to God, it grows worse and farther from God. That is what we are watching today. We are watching America fall from God. As did ancient Israel, the same pattern, subtly at first, then more overtly. As did ancient Israel, 
this nation that was founded on God. You see, there's only two nations in the world we know of that were founded solely on the Word of God, and one was Israel and the other was America. And America has been blessed of God more than any other nation, as the Puritan founders prophesied it would be. But as ancient Israel did, America has also fallen. Ancient Israel, what they did is they, they started driving God out of the public square, God out of the government, God out of their culture. They started calling what was evil good and what was good evil. They started lifting up their children as sacrifices. Well, America has done the same thing. We have also driven God from the public square, driven God from our culture, and we have also called, this nation has called evil good and good evil. And in the same way, people say, well, how can you compare lifting up children? They lifted up children on the altars of Baal and Moloch as sacrifices. Well, yes, Israel lifted up thousands, but America has lifted up millions. The prophet said, those who call evil good and good evil, well, they, well, they call evil good, you will call what is good evil. And that's exactly what we are beginning to witness now. The beginning of persecution. I'm going to read to you a quote. You might think it came from Joseph Stalin of the Communist Party. It is this. Deep-seated religious beliefs must be changed. Who said it? Not the Communist Party, but the chief Democratic candidate for president. And the reason it was said is because they said deep-seated religious beliefs must be changed so that abortion can increase. This is the new America. There is an organization that, is, that exists to basically attack Christians and calls Christian groups hate groups. This past week or so, the government had decided to set up a, an organization or a, a department of domestic terrorism to watch over groups that it deems suspicious. Well, the one who hosted, the group that hosted this meeting was this anti-Christian group. This is the new America. These are the end times. This is the time of our testing, and we must stand. Ezekiel the prophet is brought into the temple of God, and he is shown in the temple, idols fill the temple, the holy place. And God says, do you see, son of man, what they are doing? They are desecrating the holy place. Judgment will come. In the palace of Babylon, the king is, throws a party. And he calls for the vessels of the temple of God of Jerusalem to be brought into the celebration, to be lifted up, to be drunk from, and lifted up to the gods of Babylon. They are taking, this is an act of desecration, taking what is holy, what is dedicated to God, and turning it against God. And at the moment they do that, the Bible says, a hand appears on the wall, writing words in Aramaic that say basically judgment is coming that night. And the principle is, the act of desecration brings judgment, precedes judgment. Well, there is another vessel of God, no less sacred than the cups of the temple of Jerusalem. It is the vessel of marriage. To take that vessel and turn it against the purposes of God is an act of desecration. America performed that act this summer an act of desecration. And all across the country, there were rainbow flags waving to celebrate it. Well, the rainbow does not belong to man. The rainbow belongs to God. The rainbow is God's sacred sign of covenant. The first sign of covenant with the creation. What happened to this holy vessel is that this one too was desecrated against the purpose of God. It is a double desecration, a sign of holiness, trumpeting this. And what is that? The creation itself, the order of creation. You know, on America's first day as a fully constituted nation, the first president, George Washington, lays his hand on the Bible and gives a prophetic warning. And he says... The smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. If anything was the breaking of it, it was this. 
And then something else happened that day. The president gave the order to light up the White House in the colors of the rainbow to celebrate. We may have an image of that. I don't remember the White House ever being lit up for anything. And here it is. And what is this? Here it is. This is the, the chief house of the land. It's like the palace of the king of Babylon. And here the handwriting is on the wall in the colors of the rainbow. What is the rainbow? It's a sign of covenant of God's mercy in the face of judgment. What happens if you desecrate that? What is that as well? The rainbow is the colors that surround the throne of God, that God is on the throne. But to desecrate it is for a nation to say, we are not under you, God. We can redefine and change the laws of God and the orders of the creation because we are on the throne. Before Jerusalem was destroyed by the armies of Babylon in 586 B.C., the armies of Babylon broke through the first defensive wall. It was that act that allowed the destruction of Jerusalem to come right after. That day that the walls were broken is the 9th of Tammuz in the Hebrew calendar. The day that the Supreme Court struck down the order of God was the 9th of Tammuz. The same day the defensive walls were broken down in Israel. Now let me move forward. Every time something happened with the harbinger, there was always an attack of the enemy. When the harbinger came out, a hurricane, Hurricane Irene, came to our building, sweeping three to four feet over the whole ministry. When the enemy comes in like a flood. The first time I ever shared about the harbinger, out there and across from New York City and New Jersey, all hell broke loose. The town and the landlord decided to destroy our building as if the enemy was trying to stop that word and the message from going forth. The very existence of the ministry was in danger. The last service, we locked our building of 15 years, had no building. The next day, a different town in New Jersey, the town of Wayne, the board there voted seven to nothing to give us the building there. Our, it was three times the size of our first building. Our first building, they destroyed it. And in its place on the ground of that building that I preached the harbinger for the first time, they built a Walmart. <laughs> but in Walmart, there's a book department. <laughs> they don't have many books there, but one of the books they have is the harbinger. <laughs> so on the very ground where I first preached the harbinger and the enemy tried to stop it, the harbinger's going forth to America. The enemy cannot win when you're in the will of God. And all hell is coming against you, attacking on all sides. Don't you be discouraged. Be encouraged. It's a good sign because the enemy doesn't waste his energy. And so what it means is it's an attack. He knows there's something of God coming that is greater. God has something greater, but you've got to keep fighting. You've got to push through. Now, let me tell you, I want to do this. and There's a lot to share with you, but I want to share most of the time because I want to tell you this is all God. It's not about man or any person. This is how the harbinger went forth. This is how it happened. I was standing across the waters of 9-11, seeing it happen. And I prayed and I got the scripture about how when the first warning came to ancient Israel, and about a week 